वेरी वॉम वेलकम टेलीकॉम इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्टर नॉट टेक्नोलॉजी वाइज एंड द कम्युनिकेशन इट गिवस टू द जनरल पब्लिक एंड टू स्पेशल यूजर एज वेल बट फाइनेंशियली ओवर डेकेड्स एटलीस्ट फॉर द लास्ट वन डेकेड दैट हैज सपोर्टेड the revenue stream of pakistan provided jobs to so many people and now mobile phone and other solutions on the broadband are way of life in pakistan and we can't imagine mm-hmm. doing our routine work now without it that's a good thing that many companies have come to pakistan and they have thrived they have repatriated the profits and they are doing well One of the company is China Mobile Pakistan, doling out their services with the name of Zong, because it's a Chinese company, it has connotations, and because it's a Chinese company, they are focusing on expanding and uh, doing their business by bringing in new technology and bring giving better services. We have today with us. the director corporate affairs china mobile pakistan limited mr mohammad mohammad sir very warm welcome thank you how would you like to i mean introduce your services how they are how they are more suited to current needs well look first of all uh, zong is uh, the only carrier uh, who, who has the largest 4g uh, network if you will We started out in 2007, just to give you a quick background, uh, with a 2% market share. In about 10 years, we're about more than 20% market share. We have done a lot of investment in our network infrastructure, in our quality of service. Uh, at that time, we only had 2G service, and now over the years, we have 2G, 3G, and 4G service. Uh, we have the largest network, like I said, in more than 350 cities of Pakistan, uh, and we have about 75% market share. in terms of our uh, 4G services so in order to take pakistan to uh, a new level uh, of technological innovation uh, i think uh, zong is uh, probably the most suited uh, in providing its services to the people of pakistan yeah that is one company how the sector is moving sector i've heard that sector is facing some problems the sector is moving um, i think pretty uh, pretty uh, stable uh, i would say Uh, especially the uh, 2014 uh, auction of for 3G and 4G license is a pretty big role to play in it uh, yes there are there are challenges uh, like any other industry but the evolution of 3G and 4G is is pretty pretty strong uh, so every every telco has its own strategy their own goals uh, their own paths we have our own so uh, we are going very strongly in terms of our business in terms of our human resource in terms of our research uh, we have come a long way but we have a long way to go long way to go what do you think this 3g and 4g services are they do you think that they can provide some sort of a backbone that would be very useful well, absolutely look first we have to understand what 3g and 4g is <coughs> uh 3g and 4g is third generation and fourth generation so the the the, the in layman terms if i say it's it's the speed of connectivity for any country to advance economically uh if you don't have a technological edge or if you're not at par with the rest of the world then you're obviously lacking behind so the real evolution uh in pakistan uh, in terms of its economy in terms of its innovation has started since 2014 when the 3g 4g came we were the only one to have the 4g license uh until recently and we have um invested a lot like i said and uh, when 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 i say we have invested it means that we are providing more 3g and 4g coverage all over pakistan in every sector uh if you talk about healthcare education government law and order social sector we are connecting pakistan with the rest of the world and the quicker the better uh, the faster the connection will be the country will take uh, a pretty big step Uh, in its uh, economical revolution which is actually happening right now so the 4g and 3g technology has a very very strong and a leading role in taking the country to the next level <coughs> um the revenue you earn is obviously that come from the people of pakistan and uh, in some cases very poor people but they are using it and uh, that 
brings you to a point where you have some responsibility, especially at the corporate level. Are you cognizant of that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and and I think Zong or China Mobile Pakistan. So so let me let me say this. China Mobile Pakistan is actually a hundred percent owned subsidiary of China government. We are not a private entity. So revenue is just one part of it. We're not so worried about revenues. What we are more worried and what we are more uh, cautious about is how do we take this revenue from the people and invest it back on the people. That's more important for us. Um, so we have a, a corporate social responsibility just like any other organization. But I think if you look at the industry, our CSR program, corporate social responsibility program is uh, probably the more mature one, if you will. And under this program, <coughs> we have many different projects throughout Pakistan. If you go in Balochistan into the most remote area in any village, you will see that you will get a Zong 4G signal. Now, I'm not talking just about a signal. I'm talking about 4G signal. Providing people with connectivity in terms of better education, faster and better quality healthcare, a more safer city, and more projects in social reform where we are helping poor people uh, in many sectors uh, is basically what we do on a daily basis and that is what our goal is at the end of the day the government of china china mobile pakistan china mobile communication corporation the reason why we are in pakistan is to help pakistani people get to a more better quality of life all right so here we take a break and after the break we'll try to analyze uh, how the i mean it should be a win-win situation and how the company is operating on that. So please stay with us. It's diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. Welcome back. So uh, that's a vision. CSR is a vision. Uh, do you do this company understand that it's part of your business strategy and it's different from philanthropy? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I wish I had the map of Pakistan in front of me. We can show you the CSR projects, active projects that we have ongoing. They're contributing to um, your business development. They, are con they, they should are, because it's not philanthropy. They're not contributing to our business. When you talk about business development, we're talking about earning revenues. That's growth. That's business development. This is not business development. This is taking uh, money directly from our top line and putting it back to the people of Pakistan. Uh, and, and again, we don't. the one thing in our CSR program, which is different to others, is we don't just give a check. We don't just give money in cash. We have multiple projects aligned with our strategy in, in, in different uh, sectors of Pakistan, like I said, education, healthcare. And we are providing ev in every project mostly. we have, uh, yes, social sector and lead sectors like education, like law and order. Right. So we have multiple projects specifically designed through our technology. Whatever we do, we make sure that we are providing connectivity. Uh, so I wouldn't say this is just philanthropy it's uh, or business development. It, it's really helping the people of Pakistan. It, um, but it must, never, uh, I mean, help your business as well. No? It helps our business from a standpoint that we are executing on our strategy. Yes. Executing on strategy. Yeah. What are the projects? Would you share? Sure, share absolutely. Them? We have uh, multiple projects. So uh, our, our latest project, uh, we have uh, doctors project. Uh, this is basically in certain areas of, of our country, uh, due to the culture, uh, our female, uh, females who are uh, very capable, very educated, they are doctors in their own field, but they cannot go out of the house. Uh, so what we have done is we have provided our 4G technology at the doctor's house, and we have connected that doctor with multiple locations of hospitals. So the doctor does not have to go physically to the hospital, a patient just walks in, to the hospital that is and telemedicine. And they are telemedicine and they are connected through our 4G technology uh, and, and, and uh, the doctor looks at the patients, looks at the reports, give them the medicines they want and both sides are very happy. That's uh, the major project we have. Now we are running this in all four provinces and we're doing this 
uh, for the last six seven months has been running very successfully this is the uh, doctors project like i said we have a, a new project in the social uh, reform side where we are helping the uh, this the, the the young kids who are beggars at the street and they in the morning they don't have uh, time for education uh, we have a model school here in islamabad where uh, in bari imam uh, it's a very small area uh, female uh, is running that and we are providing our 4g connectivity also we have a zong volunteers program with the name of a new hope so our new hope young kids uh, they go to the school on a weekly basis and they provide free lectures and free information free education uh, to these young kids who otherwise would not have had this opportunity now the third project that i would like to talk about is on the law and order situation in pakistan uh, as you're aware uh, people do not like to go to the police stations it's not a very uh, comfortable feeling to go into a police station for non heinous crime so if you want to renew your license or you want to have your domicile or you want to file a quick report um, what we have done is in in a few locations in punjab uh, we have developed a service center in the middle of the city so any female uh, any children any people who are not comfortable going inside the premise of a police station they will go to the service station it's a very nice comfortable area with air conditioners and latest 4g technology and they can go in and they can get all their reports done or whatever services they want from the punjab police so Uh, like i said uh, we have a particular project in every single domain and, and many others like this that that we can talk about that is uh, law, law and order this was law and order you yes. were talking about yeah and um, there are few projects in i mean remote areas of balochistan we other. do in balochistan uh, we have uh, developed uh, special 4g labs now this is very important because you can think about an area where people are not connected through mobile technology at all they don't have any access and suddenly we come in and we provide them the 4g capability and then on top of that we also provide them a physical infrastructure where the young kids or entrepreneurs who are very capable but they don't have a platform now they can go into a physical area now they have laptops they have 4g connectivity it's all free for them and they can do all the research and innovation they want through zong 4g okay that's wonderful uh, what are the challenges you face uh telecommunication oh, uh, broadly speaking first what are the what is the future of telecom generally not song but generally in pakistan look pakistani telecommunication market is evolving uh, it's not very uh, i would say it's it's very uh, new for pakistan to get 3g 4g it's only been 2 years uh, so the so the industry is evolving now uh, when the industry is evolving obviously we have uh, we have to grow our network we have to grow our services So in some parts of Pakistan uh, law and order is definitely uh, one part of uh, our challenge and we have to deal with it. Uh, there are certain areas where we have a lot of ongoing trade across the borders. Uh, so providing connectivity at those remote locations is also sometimes uh, a pretty big challenge. And the third one I would say is uh, from a, from a business standpoint uh, we feel that the uh, taxes are a little high. Uh, so really these are probably the the high level if you will challenges that the industry is facing so taxation is one of the issue yes taxation is there high and multiple or just high uh actually uh, they they or unprudent at time i would say i would say at, at if you look at the overall level and if you compare pakistan with some uh, of the other developing nations the 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 ratios are high uh, and we think that we can have better policies and processes for this emerging telecommunication industry it will help the business it will help us uh, bring in more investment i was just um, uh, other day thinking that i should talk to not fortunately you are sure. here yeah. to you know i saw a person who doesn't file a return his income is but he is paying on his card why don't you talk to government on that the person who is paying so our our job is he not he cannot he is not liable for tax his income is below that actually But this I, I think, is I think tax. this this part of enforcement of tax from a common man uh and 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 to make sure that he records that tax and, and actually you're talking about two things one thing is regardless of how poor a person is one thing is tax filing even if you don't earn any money you should still file a tax anybody should file a tax the second part is whether the person should pay what level of tax these are two different things what you are talking about is the government takes tax 
uh, and and again we kind of take it on behalf of the government but the person filing the tax or not filing the tax that does not come in our domain that is the government's job uh, fpr's job uh, so the government will be more uh, better position to answer that question but he cannot uh, refund get the refund he can if he files the tax under his own bracket then the government then has very clear policy fall in any bracket is not he is below that so when he files it so i think the, pr the problem that you're talking about is not about the tax itself it's about a person is poor we charge him tax on his recharge but he doesn't get it back he doesn't get it back because he doesn't file his taxes if you file your taxes and you are below that normal average then uh, the government has very clear policies and processes i mean that grassroots level filing a tax regime compliance that will take many years anyhow and so how you are looking forward to uh, get maximum out of the that future and the opportunity that lies there well like i said we are continuously investing in pakistan uh, so far we have already invested 2.5 billion dollars uh, over a period of uh, 10 uh, 10 years in terms of our infrastructure in terms of our capacity in terms of our research um and we are continuously uh, investing more money in pakistan again not from just from a business standpoint but to make sure that china is a strategic partner of pakistan and both governments have very good relations uh, so just in 2017 we have just announced that we will invest another 200 million dollars in our uh, 4g network expansion so in the in the in the next 5 years if you will uh, right now we are at about 300 cities of 4g coverage we will continue to invest in bringing more coverage more stable network uh by the way we are the best network in in 4G best net network in Pakistan right now we want to continue to maintain that position and there are areas where we need to uh continue to uh, invest more in providing more capacity and more coverage in in Pakistan all over right so here we take another break and after the break <coughs> we'll talk about the future and uh, the way forward so please stay with us कॉल from the features phone now it's a smartphone and we are having 3 and 4 you what is new yeah uh, actually that's a pretty good question so i think the one thing that i would like to say is in in the future things are going to be quicker right. faster better uh, and that's because of the 4g technology you can imagine 4g is 10 times more faster than 3g and um, 4g is all about data for 3g you can use data and voice together but 4g is all about data so i'll give you a very quick example let's say um if there is something that is happening uh, at any particular important location in Pakistan and the media people are there and this is actually what we're doing uh and they want to cover that part of that happening uh which is a major event for Pakistan if they have the kind of technology they have will depend on how quickly they can put that information on air whether it's a law and order situation or a media or any political gathering or anything for that matter or a protest or whatever that may be but so we are helping all sectors particularly the media sector in providing them the 4G technology to make that information available to public in a quicker faster and better uh, and, and and better manner so this is just like i said about the media same thing is going for law and order if there is anything that happens in any part of the country uh, for the for the law and order agencies if they have 4G technology it will be easier for them to keep the people and the country safe and again you talk about education you talk about government things will be quicker faster better now we are providing 4g solutions to almost all of these industries whether it's private whether it's government whether it's semi autonomous uh whether it's collaboration with the other countries uh, 4g is going to provide us specific and better solutions which zong is already developing for almost all sectors uh specially specifically catered for their requirement uh, do you think that's going to create some sort of an atmosphere where other companies would be forced to invest in 4g and other and that will bring 
a very healthy competition and improve overall position of the industry and sector definitely definitely and, and again what i said uh, looking forward for new investment for sure <clears throat> for sure and we are continuously investing uh, because the market is not saturated yet uh, 4g is still evolving we are we, at least we zong uh, are continuously investing in bringing in more direct investment from china to making sure that uh, the people of pakistan benefit from it so the evolution is ongoing it's not stopped yet how much percentage of market has already been tapped what do you think well, i think the, i mean what depth is left actually this is uh, it's a little tricky to answer that and i'll tell you why if you talk about 2g the market may be capped uh, it's on the higher edges up to 100% but when you talk about 3g and 4g uh, i think maybe more than 70% of the market is still is still remaining to be capped and that is where the growth comes in that is where the investment comes in that is where our opportunity comes in to make sure that we continue to invest and and grow our network uh, do you think some of the operators have capacity which was idle for some year and they're going to use that before they bring in new technology and invest on that i wouldn't talk about other network operators i think what i would talk about is is zong itself okay uh we the capacity that we i'm have, asking because of the investment if the capacity is idle yeah then first that would be utilized so i think uh, again i'll talk about i'll talk about uh, zong in particular uh, when you have capacity and if it's an if it's idle then you're not making you're not you're not growing on it so it's not a good strategy to keep your capacity idle right uh, the better business sense would be if you have capacity you probably want to sell it wow. and and that's what we are doing if we have capacity why would we just keep it to ourselves we would like to offer it to the people right <clears throat> uh through our coverage and and again like i said we have uh more than 300 cities covered by 4g and we still have capacity we'll continue to grow anything <clears throat> any one liner at the end what you think is the future of this industry and how zong is positioning along the people of this country i think it's going to be terrific uh if you want one sentence or one word it's going to be terrific and uh the reason why i would say that if you go to any any university in pakistan and if you talk to any young Uh, entrepreneur or any young graduate and ask them have they used 4G <clears throat> and how's the experience i think it's a world it's a new world opening to our young grads to our young businessmen to our entrepreneurs uh, where they have a level playing field uh, at least from a technology standpoint to compete in in the world with any to other developing nation yeah yeah thank you very much for thank appearing you. at warpoint you have just heard the telecommunication had already grown but now they are exploring new horizons and for some years to come and there would be a growth and the from at least from the data point of view the sector is not saturated and companies are looking forward including zong they're looking forward to invest more and that will benefit the people of pakistan with this we get leave next time next guest next topics so please keep watching our programs